Hey, what's up everybody? It's me, Danae, and I'm here with a message for you. Happy Wednesday. Hope you don't... Is it Wednesday? Yeah. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Happy Wednesday. Ooh. Us too, Sana. Um, hope you're doing well. And I know I say that every day, but trust me, I mean it sincerely. I hate I hope that anyone that's under the sound of my voice is doing as well as they possibly can be. Truly. Today is Wednesday, as I said, April twenty fourth. Because yesterday was the full moon. <clears throat> so today's the 24th. And generally speaking, I would probably assume that the moon is still mooning in your world. <laughs> this one is, is, a, is a big one. So I'm looking forward to seeing what the message is today. If you did not catch my full moon message and reading yesterday, do go check it out. I forgot to timestamp as I promised, but I did go back and do that earlier today. Um, it was a very short message and then the reading to follow and you could absolutely, you know, skip ahead to just the reading and so on and so forth. But as I said at the beginning of the message, my Monday message, I feel, was quite connected to the energies of the full moon as well. So between Monday and Tuesday, you should glean something valuable, I think, from either one of those messages, okay? So let's see what we got today. Whoa, exactly as I said, the moon is mooning. <laughs> Oh man, Ten of Swords, it's the end of some gruesome cycle. And a message about it? It could either be a message about some tragic ending or a message that brings a tragic ending. What's he looking at? Ooh, Queen of Swords, eek. So this could be a message to the Queen of Swords about a tragic ending, or it could be it could be that. But the thing about it is, is that it's the Page of Cups, which is an emotional message. It's supposed to be something that evokes some emotional response, but to the Queen of Swords. Mm, it's like getting bad news about someone and it having very little, you know, it's like a message that should be sad, but the Queen of Swords is like, huh, okay, well, I'm sorry to hear that. That type of energy, like just very stoic, um, considerate, because it is the queen. So it's not like, oh, well, oh, well, type of energy per se. But then again, you never know. It depends on what type of queen is yours. But it's just kind of like, it's she's not brought to tears necessarily. She's not torn apart. She's not going to, you know do something irrational in response. It doesn't really evoke much emotion at all. It's just a matter of fact to her is how it's received. Like, okay, something happened. Maybe you want the details or the, you know, the, the facts, but that's kind of about it. So I don't know what that has to do with anything, but let's see where else, what else we got here. Another 
message. Mm. Mm. A magician. I don't even know where to put this. It feels like out of place. Like, is it a message to the Ten of Swords, of the Ten of Swords, uh, a donation? What's the, let's see, you see we got the magician at the bottom. Let me get another one for the Page of Pentacles. Someone was looking for more. Oh, okay, maybe someone would have expected more of a response to materialize with this page of pentacles on account of their misfortune. Yeah, like I was saying, it's like there was inf someone was there was information that was there was a message or some intel some news that traveled to the queen of swords about someone's demise or misfortune or them being in a bad spot or whatever but how was it was received in the objective or damn near callous way that it was was kind of like a shock, I would say, because this is like PTSD with the Nine of Wands. Somebody was kind of shocked by the lack of emotion. They expected there to there to be something to come, some, something more of more value to return to them. Like it's like somebody would have wanted to invoke. For, for whatever reason, ev ev evoking some type of emotion from the Queen of Wands would have made a, a, a difference or been um, profitable, even if it's just like energetically or so, like somebody just would get off on the fact that somebody cares about them or was sad about their demise or was distraught or feeling some type of way at all. And then it's just like, oh, okay, sorry to hear that. It's like, <laughs> it just didn't come back with the value that somebody hoped for. And it's kind of like a double smack in the face to some degree because somebody, it may make someone feel like unimportant or dis discarded or I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. Oh, what's on the bottom? Yeah, like somebody, somebody was like, is that it? That's all she said is, oh, sorry to hear that. They were looking for like a transaction in this or where it had an expectation for there to be some type of transaction, like a shed a tear, send a, send a, a card, a condolence, a something. By God, like, are you human? And it's like, yeah, but what does that have to do with me directly is the question. Or someone is just with the Queen of Swords knowing how to properly reserve their emotional um, engagement because... I mean, maybe even knowing as the Queen of Swords is intelligent, knowing that it has value for others more so than it does for knowing that it's currency. There it is. Knowing that it is a hot commodity for people to be able to kind of draw you out of your element of conservatism and, and res reservation and balanced objectivity. You know, some people prey on that to project certain energies towards you just to see you not be yourself. 
it would have been that would have been someone's great expectation, but alas, they are <laughs> gravely disappointed. And then it's also given like it, like I said, it just adds insult to injury, literally, because it's like if somebody was was planning on that or, you know, was had any was depending on that in any way, shape or form. It's like, God forbid, if somebody put themselves in a tough spot just to kind of gain sympathy or gain a response or something like that, like to bait someone in emotionally it's like, my God, you really failed because you now you're hurt and and dis disadvantaged and you still didn't get the buy-in that you were looking for. So what was it all for in the end? And it literally is the end with this Ten of Swords here. Hell, with the Nine of Wands, is almost the end. Exactly. It's like the chariot in reverse. And that came up yesterday. Oh, my goodness. I hope someone is... Y'all be careful out there. No doom and gloom here, but be be careful driving, okay? Be careful on the roads. Like, no recklessness and sober-minded alertness. Don't be tired driving. Yeah, don't be too... I know I used to do a lot of thinking when I was driving, but don't be too distracted. You know, watch your thoughts when you're, when you're on the road. Don't be distracted by, you know, lower frequencies. You don't want to attract any energy to... Especially right now, like I said, the moon is mooning, okay? And this is cancer energy in reverse, with the chariot card, so yeah, this ain't the time to be fooling around in these streets, let's say. King of Swords, wow. Mm. And then there was the Queen of Swords, yeah, so this could be, yeah. <laughs> Somebody was somebody thought they they knew how to get yeah because when you consider like the Queen of Swords King of Swords they should be counterparts right when in the tarot we know that they sometimes can show up as two people that are were once on the same page but aren't anymore but I feel like somebody thought they knew how to provoke someone or pro, to to provoke a response or something you know because as a counterpart it's like you kind of know your partner you know how they tick you know what sets them off and things like that and somebody really thought like this will get her attention this will get her to get up off that throne this will get her in her feelings or whatever and it's just like it not so much it, the plan of action did not move forward successfully <laughs> mm. sun card That's giving, when the sun and the moon showing up like that back to back, that's giving solar eclipse vibes. So there may be something significant about that time frame of something somebody tried to do, yeah, during the solar eclipse some energy they tried to send out. And remember I said that cancer is, the chariot is cancer. Now I know it's Pisces. I know that the moon is, moon card is Pisces, but here we have, you know, cancer is ruled by the moon. So I feel like somebody may have tried to, yeah. And that being, like I said, yeah, mm, they had, they had, they had, they, they had it fucked up. 
of what this solar eclipse was supposed to be about. And some energy that was supposed to be projected toward a particular target, i.e. perhaps the Queen of Swords, it was supposed to be highly emotional in nature given the like irrational energy, you know, or like I said, to evoke some irrationality with the chariot in reverse, which is cancer energy to have somebody like all mixed up in their emotions. And now the moon, which is Pisces, it being almost a, an illusion that was projected to some degree under the energy, perhaps of amplified probably by way of that solar eclipse. But we know that that was going to backfire or it has um, because, as I said, it's like somebody didn't read the room well cosmically. They thought they had the green light to do some some stupid shit during that that um, transit, and it ended up overturning, you know, their whole chariot like what the three of wands where somebody was looking forward to some return on their plan, on their investment, on some energy that they sent out. And this is what they got back. Mm -mm. And the worst part about it is, is that unlike the moon, which is under this deck and I'm about to shuffle and it'll be gone. It's like you did something under that energy in secret but the result of it all is exposed in the light or is being exposed or will be exposed. Like someone's demise. And it may be in a way where it doesn't even make sense. It's like, damn, why does stuff keep happening to so-and-so or why you know it's like news there it is the news traveling like you heard what happened to so-and-so you heard this you heard that i heard he got in an accident i heard i heard he uh lost his job i heard they had to move or what whatever like information just kind of traveling around about someone's misfortune someone's losses someone's um lack of success and it almost seems mysterious by way of the moon. Like, why is all that happening? But they know. They know exactly why. They know more. They know now more than ever exactly why. And they know that it's on account of what they projected during a very sensitive time when they thought that no one was was in was that spirit was none the wiser. I don't know how people think these things like spirit sees all, but they thought it was something that they could do to bring an end, project an ending towards someone else and evoke an, a certain un, irrational emotion on account of it to literally like knock someone off their feet, you know, not in a good way, but just to co completely create turmoil in someone's life. And it didn't it's it didn't happen that way oh, here she go again <laughs> i'm gonna put her right here queen of swords oh, well i'll be damned Shit. hold on <laughs> Cars just spit out my hand. Fell over there on the floor. Hold on, I gotta get those up. Oh, Hold on. I think I actually gotta get up, y'all. One second. <laughs> I didn't want to. That's crazy. See what I mean? Tried to try to get the Queen of Swords up off her throne. Setting in chaos. 
That's what was sent toward her. Chaos. <sighs> now I'm all out of sorts. <laughs> wow. Exactly. And then watch it. Just watch it happen. That's what somebody was like. Confusion. Karma. Judgment. Yeah, somebody had plans to just, but somebody was on guard, though. Even though they didn't seem to be paying attention. Oh, man, now my incense is all conflicted. So you can definitely count on this not being straight in some way, shape, or form. My bad. It's going to be Crooked City down here. <laughs> um... What else we got? Yeah, somebody was somebody had already closed off a cycle with the world card and they were already in their supreme energy while somebody was working to monopolize off of someone else's, you know, off of that force field that they knew was already cultivated. Here's the work that was put in, but as I said, it became a burden on their own back. It became their own self-inflicted pressure. Because someone could what wasn't listening to their intuition to pretty much put an end to some toxic cycle. There's the plan, the two of wands, for that three of wands that they were expecting. Magician a damn game. The magician, the six of wands, it's like, yeah, somebody thought they were going to be able to stop some progress. They put some work toward it. <laughs> but someone was already well on their way before this energy could even reach them really and truly because it's like somebody's already ascended beyond the the place where they could be affected by energy such as this that's what i'm saying it's like somebody thought they knew somebody like oh i i know what'll get her go i know what'll make her tick what'll make her um respond and react and get mad you know maybe try to incite somebody to anger or sadness or bitterness or you know really just trying to play on some manipulate someone's energy for for some ulterior motive here and here's the queen of swords it's like i don't think you knew that she was on that type of time Hell, she might not even know she was on that type of time. Yeah, the hermit card. I don't think you knew that somebody had. Well, hell, I'm gonna take it if we if we doing it like that. Somebody had gone within, had been doing some soul searching, some some um, you know some. I don't know what else I could call that. Like somebody's been cultivating their own their their light from the inside. Ascending, elevating. Yeah, ascended master. Yeah, somebody's become more masterful of their emotions than they may have been in the past. Cause everybody has a trigger, of course. You know, even the Queen of Swords, as Callous as she may be, there's still always some way to be triggered. Well, I can't say always, but we're not robots, <laughs> you know, we're not machines. Machines, so as long as we're still human with emotions of any sort, there is always the potential to be provoked, to emote. If you have the the you know the proper trigger but this is given that somebody thought that i don't i almost feel like somebody thought that 
someone would, they were the proper trigger. Like some, given it's the queen of swords and the king of swords, right? That if someone knew that they were in trouble or they were hurt, you know, it's kind of, you know, like an ex or even, you, I don't know, but that's what it's given to me. Like if you were connected enough with in a relationship that if you actually found out that somebody had an accident or was hurt or was at a loss or some disadvantage that that would at least trigger you to be to come to their to their aid or to just come see about them if nothing else or to send a message a note a word of comfort a curiosity anything you know like not to just kind of be dismissive about it like oh sorry to hear that <laughs> that just it it doesn't it's not um what so, what what would be expected of someone that ever had any type of connection you know but i don't know for whatever reason it ain't that type of party here and if someone is being manipulative with that projection then it serves it serves them right not to have a, a level of concerned response because it's it's not it's not even it's like illusionary to some degree like somebody might actually be hurt or maybe even need it's like somebody sending an sos but they don't really need help you know they just or the boy who cried wolf or something like that you know it's like are you really in trouble or did you just do this to yourself you know or is this any of my concern or are you in trouble because of what you were trying to do to me? You know, it could be even that, like say somebody is on their way to be on some bullshit to your house and they get into a, an accident. And then it's like, well, what was you doing in that neighborhood anyway? That's awfully close to like, why were you even around here? Like, uh, well, ah, yeah, they don't have no real explanation. So it's kind of like, why should I feel compassion and sorrowful for someone that got themselves hurt trying to hurt me or hurt someone else you know that's the energy that the queen of swords would be in like oh I, well it sucks to be you kind of sort of but what did you think was going to happen <laughs> exactly the temperance is like you better call on the angels, you know, like call call 911 in spirit and in truth because I ain't got no ambulance to come pick you up in. I'm not the trauma unit, you know, like some that's, yeah, that, that might be the title. I hope I can remember it. Like somebody wants to dump their trauma onto someone else. They want to offload that trauma that they probably created themselves any damn way, but they either they want someone else to feel sorry for them or to take some type of accountability or shared, um, like shared uh, at responsibility or something with it. I don't even know, it's just ridiculous, it seems to me. Or they at least want someone to be motivated enough to care about how they're doing in that regard, like that they're not doing well. But from this card here, it seems like, like I said, somebody brought it on themselves and this is the balance of universal order at play that whatever somebody put out is just being, you know, is, is, Whatever they served is what's being dished, is what I'm getting. And if you go take a seat at that table, you might end up getting served up too. <laughs> Shoot. Yep, here's the 10 of, and the moon card back again. Wow. Where do I want to put this? I'm going to put this here because I just want one card here with this hermit. So we got the moon and the ten of swords again. I mean, I'm sorry, the ten of, sword, ten of wands and the moon again. 
yeah, somebody did too much under that under that moonlight, one way or another, and now they they want they want some type of support system for their misfortune. Oh <laughs> wow, five of cups. So they 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 are deeply regretful. I don't know about remorseful, but at least deeply regretful for what they have created for themselves. And it I mean it it's it's like it's valid it's a valid emotional response to your misfortune, but it's like what do you this is somebody that wants company in their misery and that's just not fair it's not reasonable and it's not fair you need support you need help you need you know professional consideration for why the, this was created in the first place and for the after effects, all of which, so, you know, you must take accountability and responsibility for, but it doesn't get to be dumped on someone else. feel like the king of cups should be down there too honestly but in any event it's like someone that's feeling a great deal of emotional yeah it's it, it belongs here it belongs here somebody's feeling the weight of their emotional baggage right now now they want to be feeling <laughs> Like when they were just doing and acting out of that King of Swords energy or, you know, without really considering the consequences or the impact of their actions, it was all good. But now someone is feeling the pressure and it's causing them to want to find some type of relief. Especially if we're talking about, ooh, damn. Especially talk coming out of that five of cups. Somebody really wants to, to be able to take control over those emotions. And the only way that you can control that energy, that density, is to take accountability and responsibility. To... to become aware and to accept where you have created the circumstance that you're experiencing and to take authority over how you can now remedy that situation, whether it is support of a professional nature or relieving yourself of whatever cycle has, you know, whatever has contributed to this outcome, making sure that you scrub your energy of that. You know, if you're still doing the same thing that brought you to this heartache or acting out in the same way, thinking the same thoughts, if you can't release yourself of that energy for yourself, then that's when you got to call in the Calvary to help you out. And that could be in spirit and in truth. But again, professional support, but also like internal, you know, also going within and finding some respite for, you know, your, uh, your imbalances. That's the, that's the way that someone can be, be masterful in their emotional state at this time. but there's a lot of trauma here. There's a lot of trauma and it's become, the trauma has become toxicity. 
the trauma has become like toxins. Yeah. And don't, oh man, I hope someone's not trying to like numb themselves into relief from what they're feeling, but that could be it too, which is also contributing to the exasperation of their experience because that's not healing at all. That's just intensifying the truth of their trauma once it once the you know once the inebriation is worn off or whatever the coping mechanism may be has kind of lost its luster it still all comes back to why you're hurting in the first place like what's really going on Let me just get one with the hermit if I might. Mm. This kind of came up upside down. The Knight of Cups. Again, like, yeah. It's given that somebody may may be trying to so-called go within either for all the wrong reasons or mm, cuz it's something with this this being upside down yeah it's like somebody may be trying to kind of rush the process of healing or trying to almost forced themselves into some self some a state of awareness but it's like once again trying to take control over a situation in a, like an unhealthy way how can i say that better because it's like the knight is going towards the hermit like as if he would want to pursue this inner knowing and higher learning and self-awareness and finding his inner light, but it's maybe it's a, it feels like disgruntled and, and it feels like the motivation is, it's like, let me get this healing, you know, let me, let me figure out what's going on. I don't know, something feels weird about it. Like somebody's trying to force the process or they're trying to, um, trying to fake the process. That's what it could be, actually. With the sun card right up top, it could be that somebody's trying to appear as if they're trying to take this journey inward, maybe even publicly or to those that can see this demise. They're talking a good talk about how yeah, I just really need to get to the root of my problem, figure out what's going on with me, you know, do some healing work. I've just been working on my shadows, you know, really trying to figure myself out. When it's like they're not really trying to do that, not productively. I mean, it could still lead to the same <clears throat> destination, which is the good news about it, where somebody might, find themselves getting the healing that they didn't really mean to, you know, to stumble upon. But it may be um, delaying the process to some degree of it actually beginning to materialize because somebody's either doing it for appearances or they're doing, they're saying they're doing it because it sounds good. It's like when you, when your back is up against the wall and you're looking a little unwell, it's like, well, someone wants to at least appear to be open and willing to get in some level of of help so to speak otherwise it'd be forced upon them or pe or just do more damage to how people see them you know it's kind of almost surrendering to the narrative but trying to kind of spin it to make it 
at least work a little bit more in favor of you or have a, a different inflection of light or some something like that. It's some type of finesse going on here, but it's not really working. That's why the Knight of Cups is upside down because it's like you're only finessing yourself because whomever you're trying to impress or convince doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. And if you're not actively doing what you say that you're doing, then you're not really helping yourself. You're still going to be stuck kind of in the same place and with the same circumstance, you know? So it's like, I don't know. That's weird. Exactly. When the judgment is not going to be any different, the verdict is someone needs some spiritual perhaps even some psychological, emotional, maybe even physical or material support. Like somebody's down bad. Somebody is not doing well. And it's killing them to really be in that position, particularly being exposed in that position. But it also kills their pride that much more to be in that position, in the position to have to need help to not be in that position, if that makes sense. But it's like, regardless, it's time for someone to just kind of surrender and submit to the possibility of a second chance at this point. Otherwise, I don't know. I don't even know how someone can sustain this, uh, this, I don't even know what to call it. <laughs> like, I don't even know what to call it. Because like I said, it's like somebody's only hurting themselves as they try to fool themselves, fooling other people. But it's given that people don't even buy it. It's like, mm, okay feel better, you know, type of energy. So the people that you're trying to fool or impress or convince aren't buying it. So that's pointless. And then, <clears throat> you know, you're not getting much support, support in that regard either because those people aren't the ones that have the energy to help to really support you through your healing. Or through whatever transition this is. Yeah, and this is Scorpio energy with the moon and with the Ten of Wands. It's like somebody is really struggling to release <clears throat> their resistance to these endings that are impending. To really just like give it up, let it close it up. Close that cycle, let it be what it's going to be, and let's figure out how we can now move ahead. Because this ain't it. Let me get a couple more over here, maybe, I suppose. I don't know. I'm just all over the board today. Swords in reverse, but the Eight of Wands. I feel like they've been disabled. Yeah, there this this energy, this win at all cost ambition has been disabled because everything's been backfiring. Everything that they try to do in this fake ass you know, I'm, I'm fine. I just need a little bit of healing type of energy. It's like somebody's still trying to finesse the situation or the system to keep so that people, so it's not known just how deep it is, but it's already known to be deep. You know, it's like somebody's still reaching for the win, but every time they try, they find themselves 
defeated here with the Five of Swords. It backfires every time. They're trying to they're trying to fight trauma with trauma. And that that's just I don't know what the heck this is for someone. With the page of wands, another message. So it's, it's, it's like somebody's getting hella messages, hella wake up calls about a more optimal or optimum, I think, direction, a, a more optimum course of action or direction. And either they're ignoring it or, like I said, they're just still kind of stuck in some traumatic cycle of pride and ego because they just don't, maybe they don't want to believe that they are in such a dis disadvantaged position as the Five of Swords. Like someone doesn't want to admit defeat or feel defeated or feel like they lost. So it's like they're adding, like I said, more insult to injury as if there wasn't enough already. When there's no dishonor in needing support, especially emotional or psychological, like there's no there's no dishonor there. But when you are still trying to offload that, yeah, that's still what that is. It's like somebody is still trying those tricks of finding another host for their, their trauma, their, their horrors. Like, let me blame it on you or shift it onto you or make like make it your problem or, you know, like, really trying to find relief outside of themselves, but that's it's just not happening like that. Not now and probably not ever again because that is not productive in the realm for anybody anymore to just keep shuffling their traumas around onto other people and moving on, you know, business as usual, because like I said, it doesn't go anywhere. The energy doesn't die. But now what it's like, what happens is it's like you've infected someone else with, with the trauma and the drama and maybe have kind of like, uh, subdued the effects for a time, a short period of time, but still no less um, infected. It's just like a Band-Aid on a gaping wound, pretty much. So eventually it's gonna need to be stitched up. But now not only is it you that has this wound or this this dysfunction or whatever the case may be, now you've, you've now passed that along to others that have that much more on top of their own stuff to have to to heal from and to deal with that's that's just not it's not sustainable on the earth anymore it's not fair it's not sustainable it's not productive it's not prosperous it doesn't move creation forward at all it keeps us stuck worse than stuck it keeps us like depreciated a depleted species the more that that persists which is why the massive judgment call for healing and ascension and transcendence beyond the trauma and evolution energetically is, 
it's it's imminent at this time because it's for the sake of the the survival of creation and perhaps even the earth itself at this point because the more we desecrate ourselves the more we desecrate the land as well and it's just like guy ain't going out like that <laughs> like something got to give either y'all going here or y'all going to get the fuck off the planet <laughs> You know, like back to babies if we got to, but something got to give, you know? So anybody that's still operating in that function willingly, insistently, when you've had opportunities, invitations, um, hell, even guides, way showers in the flesh and in the spirit to kind of usher you out of that space, you're only eventually going to be eliminating yourself because you the, the the plant the the vibration in the realm no matter what it looks like otherwise by way of the news social media hell even maybe in your very own neighborhood like energetically there's there's a rising that is occurring and those that do not wish to rise with it will fall to the wayside Ten of Swords. It's just as simple as that. And some people are have a, a certain privilege to rise with a supreme support system. And for whatever reason, they chose other, other routes and other alternatives. And they still have some privilege to that support, however depreciated or <clears throat> defective it may be at this time to really, you know, that's what I'm saying. It's like somebody literally has a way shower that it would be willing to, to usher them into some space of light and love. And they're still trying to play around. Like how long you think that's going to last? How long you think ancestors are going to be patient with you to be a willing participant in your own healing. Not too, not too long anymore because it's just like the, the grace for, for that is running thin now. I'm not saying that it's not there and I'm not saying it, don't, it won't always be, but the stakes are too high to, to be trying to drag somebody along by their coattails. You know, it's like, you gotta be willing to go now. If you're not willing, then those ancestors, way showers, guys, angelic forces will be much more productive elsewhere, assisting those that want to go for the ride, that wanna take, that are a yes to that journey. And nobody got time to be trying to convince nobody of the way to go at this point. Like, there's too much evidence here that just on this board alone, that where you've been going hasn't really been working out for you. And that's the point of this whole denial thing. It's like somebody just refuses to feel like they lost anything, but you didn't lose anything. You won yet another chance and an opportunity to advance beyond your trauma and your t and, and turmoil, lest you be consumed by it. That sounds like a win to me. <laughs> mm. Four of Wands, and it kind of came out in a struggle. I'm gonna take it upright, but it's like, yeah, some this is where somebody's trying to lead. It's like you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink type of energy because there's privilege for this. There's potential to obtain this harmony, this peace, this balance, but you got to want to do it. You got to want to have it. You got to want to be it. You don't just walk up into this estate like you own the place just because your name may be attached to the lineage it's like, do you pay the mortgage? Do you pay the bills? You know, it was this rightfully signed over to you? It's like some, like a, like an um, inheritance that wants to be passed down to someone 
but they're proving themselves to be quite irresponsible to maintain it. Like as soon as they get it, they'll squander it away. High Priestess. Some type of secrets about a house or what's going on in a house or a home or a foundation. Where that's maybe why it was in a struggle because it appears to be one way. Yeah, that's just the appearances again. That somebody is still trying to keep up the facade and conceal their their secrets. You know, like no, everything's fine. We're all good here. Uh, we're just going. To I'm just going through a little something, but. You know, who isn't, right? Am I right? <laughs> like, I, I, yeah, I guess. But are you righteous is the question. Are you even trying to be? Do you even know the way to righteousness at this point in time? Someone is being guided on that path or someone energy would like to guide be to be the guide on that path but man i don't know yeah ten of cups Could be all of that. Real peace, harmony, wellness, health, spiritual satisfaction, fulfillment. Reclaiming your legacy, you know, living a legacy of love. That's what someone has rights to, but only by way of their own righteousness. And that's what someone's struggling with, like really getting themselves back on the straight and narrow path. And that doesn't mean like doing no wrong and being, you know, pristine in all of your ways and all you know always knowing the right answer and never doing you know anything questionable or whatever whatever the societal standard of righteousness or rightfulness may be it's not that it's like somebody is falling way out of alignment with their own personal integrity finding themselves doing things that they don't even want to do, that they never really wanted to do to some degree, or that they knew was a conflict in their own spiritual, their natural nature, you know, their 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 spiritual um, essence, you know, like what they felt was right or good or prosperous or productive, like somebody has betrayed themselves in that regard, going against it time and time again. And still there's concession to be rerouted back to that righteous path for the preservation of a legacy, a lineage, a, a happy home life. But somebody just really has to surrender to it truthfully not seductively you know like trying to seduce the spirit to believe like or anyone else you know finesse anyone else to believe that that's what you're after when you're really not it's like you really just need to truly pursue that with everything in your entire being or else at this point, <laughs> like, yeah, and I was going to say, like, the purpose, somebody's holding on to appearances and material, and that's, that's what's getting in the way, 
you know, it's like somebody still is having a hard time letting go of security, of like a false sense of security by way of what it appears to be, what their appearances are, what their reputation may be, what even perhaps what their material assets may be, you know, but it's like if it's not a matter of the assets that you have to invest in your support system and in your healing. It doesn't matter how much you have in the bank at this point. It doesn't matter the house you have or the car you drive or what caliber of friends you hang out with or who, you know, what parties you get invited to or none of that. Because most of that, at least the <clears throat> the obsession with it all is probably partially contributory to the state of affairs as they are in the first place. So somebody really just gets the opportunity to have a different result by doing something different with the Hierophant here. Yeah, like morals ethical standards, you know, not, again, not by societal norms. And that's probably the, the issue here. Somebody's still holding on to what it means to be successful and to be um, moral and considered honorable and upright and, and revered and respected and maybe even feared to some degree <clears throat> with the Hierophant here. But that's, the, this, these man-made constructs of any of that are fleeting. They change from generation to generation for the most part. And there are constructs that even the facilitators themselves can't truly uphold to the fullest extent, most of them. So it's like a projection of, it's, it's like a built-in system to almost diminish you into some guilty standard <clears throat> or, you know, shame or wor worthlessness. It sets a standard that you're never really truly meant to live up to, you know. So it's like a built-in failure. It's the standards that we set between ourselves and our supreme nature, who it is that you want to be. Minus the material shit, none of that. That has to be all flushed out. But who do you want to be in character, in consciousness, in creativity? Who, how do, you, how would you feel? Who would you feel honored to see in the mirror, looking back at you? Who would you be honored? You don't have to feel like you gotta hide any part of yourself, conceal what you do, keep. Um, skeletons stuffed away in the back of the closet because what you do, whatever it is you do, you're proud of it. You're unapologetic about it. You know, like, and if you can't be that, then that's, that's a point of contention right there. Shoot, even the worst of the worst, like, it's like, well, hell, if that's how he feels comfortable being and he's loud and proud about it, there are people out there like that. This is just who I am. And you'd be surprised at how easeful their lives are, no matter what anybody, what outside opinions may be about it, but their own personal integrity is intact because they're living in their own truth. How that gets to be governed between you know, source of all, whether or not a person even submits or surrenders to that is an entirely different situation. But a lot of our human downfalls and pitfalls are on account of how we feel judged by one another or how we judge one another. And this is somebody that's put way too much stock in how they are perceived when it really matters most and how they truly perceive themselves. So much so that they, I don't even think they even truly see themselves quite clearly anymore. Maybe they're getting back to that or that's the journey to get to, but 
yeah, like you got to live with you. You got to be satisfied, pleased with yourself above all else. You can't even leave it up to, you know, like surrender it to the affirmation of an intangible force, I would say even. It has to start with self first, like man in the mirror type of energy, because if you can't start there and something that's 3D that you can literally relate to in real time with your own senses, like I said, it's like you can't even begin to reach some supernatural standard of righteousness by way of some ideal of a higher power, you'll always feel less than, you'll always feel like a wretch, you know, like a second class citizen, <laughs> a second class creation or something. I don't know. It's like it has, it, it gets to start with how you feel about yourself. And we've been conditioned to see it in the uh, in the reversal, but that's been the pitfall so that we wouldn't be looking from within. And so therefore, we would never find that satisfaction, that self-awareness and that self-affirmation from that point. If we're always looking for it outside, never to find it, we'd always be lost. So it's like a call to return to self and to aspire to supreme in the expression of self, though. Can't bypass the self. Wherever you go, there you are. So it said. So anyway, I guess it's just time for, for us all to just get real about being real. And for some, that's a much harder feat than for others. Anyway, <laughs> thanks for listening. Thank you for watching. Until next time, as always, I leave you with peace.